Hey YouTube, this is Ian from Big Rock Media, formerly Big Rock Moto, Big Rock ADV, and whatever else I used to call it. Now I promised you the motorcycle content was here to stay and I'm a man of my word, so we're gonna have a lot more motorcycle content starting now. So for the past couple of months, I've been riding in the Climb Krios Pro Carbon. Now this is Climb's newest and latest flagship dual sport helmet. It's made of carbon fiber and it uses the choroid construction. Now just to be clear again, I am not a sponsored channel. I do not accept sponsorships. I do not want sponsorships. I have no affiliation with Climb or any of the other gear or companies that I review. My goal for my audience is to stay completely unbiased and objective as I possibly can. So I spend my hard earned dollars on the stuff that I want to purchase based on my own research. Let's get the elephant in the room dealt with right away. This is a $700 helmet. The point of this review is to try to tell you whether or not this helmet is actually worth $700 and if this is in fact the best dual sport helmet available as Klein would like you to believe. Okay, so why did I buy this helmet? Well, I needed a new dual sport helmet. My older HJC dual sport helmet was getting a bit beat up and a bit old. Also, I was pretty unhappy with some of the quality and the face shield on the HJC helmet and it was just time for me to spring for something nice. I've always had really good experience with the Klein products in the past. And based on the marketing and the PR stuff that I was reading on this helmet, it seemed pretty convincing. The helmet had really good reviews online and from other riders. And it's about the same price as the comparable high-end helmets from Shoei and Arai. So let's talk about the standout features of this helmet. So I'm not going to put these in any particular order, but I'm just going to go through them. So this helmet is one of the lightest weight helmets out there, not just for a dual sport helmet, but for a helmet in general, period. So this helmet you see here weighs 3.1 pounds or about 1400 grams if you're in another country. Now, how does that compare? Well, the Shoei Hornet X2 weighs four pounds, so almost 25% more than this helmet. That's 1800 grams. The Arai XD4, which is another really popular dual sport helmet, weighs 3.6 pounds or 1,650 grams. So the weight is a really big deal. The reason that weight is important is because you feel it when you ride. You feel it on your neck all day long and having a lighter weight helmet is a great thing. I really like the versatility of this helmet. Now this is kind of true of all dual sport helmets, uh, but you can run it in, in, dual, in adventure mode, which I have now, which is with the shield on. So how I have mine set up is that I run the goggle quick strap and you can then run your goggles here like this using the quick strap. So I keep them stored behind the helmet here with the quick strap system. Um, or you can, take, you can take the beak off, the visor off to give you the smoothest wind flow and that's kind of street mode. Um, you can also of course uh, run with the uh, visor but not with the face shield and I guess that would be like a dirt helmet then and then you'd use goggles. So I guess there's really four modes you can do. This helmet is, has some pretty cool technology in it. It uses the choroid construction. So the choroid is like a, a, some kind of a membrane, and I'll put the information up here on the screen, but it's a radically different kind of design than EPS foam, styrofoam liner that you find in most helmets out there. Um, Klein says that this is more breathable, uh, it has much more ventilation because it's mostly air. They also have a lot of claims about crash protection and safety. Now I can't confirm or deny those things. Um, you can go research it on your own because they're making some pretty big claims about it. Now I will tell you that this is not the first time I've seen something like this in helmets. So I also happen to be a cyclist and in cycling I'm starting to see helmets, especially from companies like Trek. Uh, come out with they have they have a different name for it, but it's basically the same idea They're going away from the styrofoam and using different kinds of materials for the protective impact liner uh, of the helmet So I should note that this helmet is DOT and ECE approved, but it is not Snell approved Another amazing thing about this helmet from my own experience is the ventilation This helmet ventilates better than almost any other helmet that I've had including dirt helmets I think it has something to do with a really good venting scheme, but also it has to do with that choroid construction that allows air to flow through. I never feel hot in this helmet, and that is definitely not something I could say after wearing the Shoei Hornet X2, the HJC Dual Sport helmet, um, other helmets from companies like AFX. I have a Fox Dirt helmet. I've had Fly Racing Dirt helmets. I've had a lot of different helmets, and this ventilation is really as good as they say it is. Another amazing thing about this helmet, and I'll put up some, some better video of this here, is this Fidlock strap system. This Fidlock strap is simply a game changer. So how it works is, and this is especially nice when you're wearing gloves, uh, which you are probably when you're riding, you simply get the buckle close to where it needs to be and it magnetically clicks into place. Look at that. You hear the click? That's amazing. Uh, you don't have to think about it at all. You just simply get it close, 
it has this little strap and then it clicks into place magnetically. Um, it is uh, ECE and DOT approved. It is super safe, super strong. The magnet's not giving you the holding protection. It just allows it to latch. And then to remove it, you just pull this little red tab and it's off. It's seriously one of the game changing features of this helmet. And I hope that other companies are able to adopt this strap because it would benefit all riders out there. Okay, so the helmet comes with a transition shield. Now, I do not have actually have the transition shield, and that's a long story because mine didn't come with it because I bought this as a demo uh, from eBay. Anyway, who cares? I don't have the transition shield. I'm also not going to be purchasing it, and here's why. Number one, it's $150. Now, keep in mind, it comes with the helmet if you buy it brand new from Climb, so I was kind of bummed I didn't get it. Uh, but I'm not going to be buying it because number one, that's expensive. Number two, I hear they're kind of easy to scratch. And number three, when you have the peak on uh, and the sun's coming down like this, you're going to get different lines on the helmet because the helmet reacts chemically to light hitting it. So when the light's hitting it unevenly because of this peak, it's not really going to darken evenly. And actually, I believe Climb says in their own materials that if you are... Uh, if you're riding with the shield, you should not use the, or if you're riding with a visor, you should not be using the transition shield. So let's talk about noise for a minute. So the noise level on this helmet, I would say is about average for a dual sport helmet. I wouldn't say it's really particularly quiet. I felt that my Shoei Hornet uh, X2 was maybe a little bit quieter. Uh, I'm not sure if this has to do with the corid materials or the carbon fiber shells. Some people have said that carbon fiber helmets are a little bit louder. And this is the first carbon helmet I've had, so maybe it's that. It's not a deal breaker. It's not really something, you're probably not gonna notice it, but I pay attention to little details. And it seems, uh, it seems um, it's not as quiet as I expected for the money. I guess I'll put it that way. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you like this content and you want to see more content like it, please help me create more of this by doing three things. You can subscribe to the channel, you can hit the thumbs up button on the video, and you can also consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and now back to your video. I like how this whole mechanism here is easy to remove. So you basically twist these little locks. I'm not gonna do it right now because I have to put it back. But you twist these things and the shield and the visor come off really, really easily. So if you wanna to convert to a different mode or you wanna take your visor off, it's pretty easy to do that. The visor is, uh, also I want to mention about the, the beak here. Some people call it the peak, a beak, a visor, whatever, whatever it is. Um, this one is pretty aerodynamic. You can see it's got really good like scoops going through it. So the air doesn't seem to catch it too much and buffet you around. Um, I've ridden this on naked bikes without any windshield. I've ridden with different windshields on my GS and my 790 uh, and even my 500. And I don't get the moving around based on this. So they did a good job aerodynamically with that. Also, the viewport is really big, and that's a benefit of dual sport helmets in general, but it's very optically correct and very large. I just, it's hard to go back to a street helmet because once you get used to the big visibility of this, it's kind of hard to go back to that smaller uh, shield on a street helmet. Now, they do come with a pin lock. I have not used, you can see the little notches here for the pin lock inside. You're going to need to use that in winter. I haven't used it in winter yet. We're just going into fall now. Uh, but you're going to need to use Pinlock to prevent fogging in the winter. Uh, the Pinlock system is pretty universally accepted and well-liked for anti-fogging properties. Uh, let's talk about the sizing. So the sizing, I wear a large in most helmets. Sometimes I'm between a medium and a large. I bought the large on the Climb. Yeah, so I went with the large size on the Climb, and I think it fits around true to size. It fits how I expect a large helmet to fit me. Um, if you want to have a comparison, like I wear a large in Fox and HJC, I wear a large... Actually, I think in showy, I might be between a medium and a large, but every helmet's different. You really have to try them on. And anyway, uh, check the sizing for yourself, you know, measure your head, look at the charts. But for me, it fits about what I expected based on other brands. Uh, it's com very extremely comfortable. The, the liner of the helmet is very soft. It's antimicrobial, it's easy to remove. Um, I find it a very, very comfortable helmet to ride all day in. Um, that has to do with the ventilation. It has to do with uh, the type of material they use for the padding. And I just find it to be a great uh, helmet to spend the day in. So I would have to say that my number one, my, I would have to say that my top favorite things about this helmet and why I think it is actually worth the $699 uh, sticker price is a few things. The, the weight, the weight is, is substantially less than the competitors. You're talking about almost a pound less than the Shoei and almost you know, three quarters of a pound less than the Arai. That is something you immediately notice from the minute you put it on. Uh, now I know I sound like a climb spokesman or salesman here, but I promise you I'm not. But the weight is definitely something that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, the ventilation, the ventilation 
Having this good of ventilation on a dual sport helmet is kind of a game changer because it makes me a lot less um, it makes me a lot less inclined to want to switch out to a dirt helmet for riding on the trail. So I really like the ventilation. Of course, also the fact that, you know, you can close down your vents here really easily wearing gloves and you can then block the wind off if it's cold or you don't need the ventilation. Um, but so far really good. Some riders have reported that dust kind of gets in and makes the vents and the shield harder to operate. Um, I found that to be true on, on any dual sport helmet. So I don't think that's just unique to climb, but your mileage may vary. So what about the value? So for $700, it's definitely on the high end of helmet. But if you look at the Arai and the Showy, if you buy them in the pattern, so the solid colors on those are like 600, but if you want a pattern, um, by the way, I think Climb has probably the best different patterns out there. Uh, it's $700. And the Arai and Showy with the patterns are also about $700. The fact that you're getting the lightweight corrugated and carbon fiber construction, the excellent ventilation, the Fidlock strap, and of course the great graphics and everything else, um, I think this makes it the best value dual sport helmet um, on the high end. It's definitely a better value than the Showy and the Arai. I speak as someone who just owned a Showy Hornet X2. Uh, this is much more helmet for the money because of those features that I've talked about. Also, the Fidlock system is right up there with the ventilation and the lightweight. The Fidlock, once you have it, you are not going to want to go back. The convenience of just being able to get that buckle somewhat near while you're wearing gloves and then it just snaps itself into place with a magnet is like the first time you experience it, it's like, whoa, that's a game changer. Uh, you don't want to go back to the strap going through the buckle or even the ratchet strap that some European helmet, helmets have where you click the ratchet in. I don't like that one either. This one is the best and I hope other manufacturers can adopt it. So overall, in conclusion, I am a big fan of this helmet. I think it's worth every dollar of the price tag. I wish it was less expensive, but you have to compare it to what it competes with. And what it competes with is six and $700 helmets. I think it's the best value. I think it's the best looking. I think it has the best features. And I am super happy with my purchase. And if, if I crash in it or whatever, I will definitely buy a new one and replace it with the same model. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was useful for you. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up button and stay tuned for more motorcycle videos. We'll see you next time.